My name is Jackie Murray with Ask a Tech Teacher and I am your guide through these 32 lessons in the third grade technology curriculum. I actually run kindergarten through fifth so you've probably seen me in those also. But today we're doing the lesson three in the third grade curriculum and it's on keyboarding. This is one of several lessons that is um, introduced as a lesson but you actually reinforce it throughout the year. It's not one you can say, okay, I taught keyboarding one lesson, I'm moving on. You just can't do that with keyboarding. So you, enter, you get the ideas of the lesson here, of keyboarding here, and then you reinforce it throughout the year. So this lesson you're going to want to go back to often throughout the year. Same with the students in, in their lesson. They're going to get all their basics. They're going to see the hand position. They're going to see the checklist. They're going to see the grading and all this other stuff. And then they're going to know, okay, throughout the year, I can go back to this lesson three and uh, use it. They might even want to mark it. So we can go to fill and sign, and they can go to, what do we want to mark it with? What do you think? What's a good way to mark it? I don't know. What, what is that? A dot. Doesn't sound exciting. How about a big check mark? Not really big. Oh, can I make it bigger? Oh, there we go. Good. So a big check mark that they want. This is everything with a big check mark they're going to go back to a lot. So there you go. And they have that. So um, or whatever they decide as a way that they're going to constantly go back to this particular lesson. So now it is marked. We could erase it, of course. Oh, let's just highlight it too. Oh, there I got. I think I wonder if Control Z will take that out. That was too much for me, but we could highlight it like that. And now we've got that. That's an important lesson. Maybe that's a better way than the check mark. I'll leave that up to you. I've completely digressed. So let's go back here. Vocabulary you want to use throughout the year. Benchmark, log on, rhythm, screen versus monitor, short key, touch typing, which they start next year at the earliest. They do not start, but you can say, Next year, you'll be starting touch typing. They'll get excited because kids always like to think of when I'm old enough. WPM, words per minute. Problem solving. Um, these are, they haven't seen some of these before. If, if you use dance mat typing, it won't play the flash version. So here's a solution for that. The um, digital device doesn't work. You've had, how fast should I type? That's a new one. I don't know where the keys are, so I'm slow. That's a new one, but it's not new to you. So here, here's the problem. So you, you want to address these with them so that they're familiar. Scaffolded keyboarding and typing posture because they have done key, pre-keyboarding and keyboarding in second grade. And then the new is the keyboarding assessment. You haven't assessed them before, but you're going to starting in third grade. How do I use the keyboard to share ideas? Students connect keyboarding and classwork authentically. You don't teach keyboarding for the sake of learning keyboarding. Where to put your fingers, how fast and accurate to type. That's not why they learn keyboarding. They learn it because they use it in so many things in their education career. If they didn't, they wouldn't need to learn it. Assessment strategies for you. And your preparation is, let me see, have the um, hardware quiz results, which they took last week. You want to be able to talk to them about it. If they have, um, tell them how they did and be, know if they had any holes that you need to really review with them. If, if everyone forgot peripheral, then you want to discuss that in more depth with them or just keep going back to it several times. That's all really it would take. Start collecting words from students that they don't know, like touch typing, like WPM, because you're going to be doing a Speak Like a Geek board presentation and you'll need those words for it. Without that, you'll, you'll get a list there that you can use, but it's always better to use authentic ones from the class. Okay, um, class warm-up is keyboarding. Have them open up the program they're used to using and try it out for three to five minutes. Discuss the evidence board. Um, evidence, if, if you're doing the evidence board, this is a good chance to get started on that. Ask students, give them about 10 seconds 
to tell you about some authentic use they made of a tech skill they learned last week. And then they'll fill out the badge and put it on the board. Then these are the topics you'll cover. There, you can see keyboard assessment is throughout the year. You're going to be doing, you're going to assess keyboard. The overview is a good one to accomplish today. Homework is throughout the year. Key knowledge and assessment throughout the year. Skills throughout the year. So you can see how we're going to go, you'll go over them with the students, but not with the intention really so much of learning or memorizing, but of being prepared or being introduced to. So their goals here, 15 words per minute, good posture, and attention to accuracy. You're not grading speed or accuracy till next year. Here's things to look for on varying levels. If your students just started keyboarding this year without pre-keyboarding, then you're, you're not going to assess these terribly rigorously. Okay, if, you're, if you do an assessment today as a benchmark, then put it on your iPad and fill one in. Load 26 of them or however many you have for the student, for the students in the class, and then fill it in. Or load one, fill it in, take a screenshot, and then erase it and start over with the next student. Whatever works better for you. Hand position, um, grading standards, go over these with, with students. And let's see, a couple ways you can deliver the speed quiz, printed copies, or use a typingtest.com or something like that where they have material they type for three to five minutes. Walk around and watch them. And then have them spell check, definitely. You want them to spell check what they're done because you always want them to realize that part of typing is accuracy, is presentation. Mulligan rule. They'll remember Mulligan rule from last year, but go over it if you need to. It applies. If they don't feel like this benchmark was as good as they could get, then they can retake it. Go over these, why to learn keyboarding. A lot of these will not apply to third graders, but they'll sound familiar for future, for siblings that they have. So this lesson builds on the pre-keyboarding skills started in kindergarten, preparing students for the increasing technology demands of education. Here's um, hints that they had K through two, but they're still fine for third graders to remember. Here's their stages. So just let them know you are up to this one. Reinforce the basics you learned in second grade. Work on accuracy and technique. But fourth and fifth is when you really apply for accuracy and technique. Homework is in the back of the book, and it's all keyboarding, and it, they have it for the entire year. This year, they're, this month, they're working on home row, which is just these two types, dance mat typing home row, or popcorn typer, which has home row. Now, if you have another favorite keyboarding tool that has concentrates on home row, feel free to use that. doesn't matter. It's fine as long as whatever they're looking at only shows home row. And um, by month four, they'll, they'll go through a row at a time. And then by month four, they'll do all the typing using whatever your typing tool is. They'll do all the rows. Throughout the year, you're going to assess their knowledge with important keys, keyboard, with a blank keyboard, Usually these are done with a partner so that they can work together. Um, if it gets too easy, have them do it individually. Usually it doesn't in third grade. And then they'll submit it and they'll be graded based on improvement just as they are in their keyboarding. Keyboarding is graded based on improvement. And right here you can see the improvement. And same with these quizzes. As long as they're improving, they're doing well. Okay, take three to five minutes with a neighbor and try to name as many of the 15 important keys as possible. Now, they, they could look at the keyboard. It's not a big deal if they do or don't or, or not. Maybe this first time have them look. They'll, have, they'll spend most of the time trying to find the keys and decide which are the most important as they would if they just tried to name off these up here. But you decide. 
because the idea is that they start getting comfortable with these as very important keys that they want to know how to use. If you get done early, because this really isn't a lesson so much as an overview, then feel free to let them start their homework, this month's homework. Go to the Internet Start page and go to some keyboarding websites you put there, whatever, any of those. Let's see what I've got in the keyboarding in the student workbook. I think these are a little bit bigger and they can pinch out and see those scores better. These definitely they can pinch out and read better. This shows where home row is. And this shows where the QWERTY row is. So they can easily see these are the keys we're talking about. And then this is the lower row. This is a really good one for them to have. It's blank so they could actually pinch out and then start filling these in. And then they have that. And, and this too, especially if they want to start noting down which keys are the important keys, they could do that right here in their book with the annotation tool. Take some notes here with their annotation tool. That's all good. And then here's examples. When you're ready to give them the, the blank keyboard quiz, this is for Chromebook, obviously. This is for PCs. And this is the important keys test. All right, guys. We're good. That's it. Um, come ask questions on our discussion board on the wiki. I'm happy to help you with anything. And come visit me during office hours on Sundays, and I'll be happy to answer any questions also. All right. Have a great week. I look forward to talking to you. Bye.